Do the communities most at risk actually want to defund the police? We already know the answer. Amid last summer's BLM riots, Gallup found that 81% of black Americans wanted police to spend the same amount of or more time in their neighborhoods. Here now with me, Dr. Ben Carson, former HUD secretary, founder of the American Cornerstone Institute. Dr. Carson, um, these racial radicals are signaling to someone out there thinking they're connecting with someone on this message of defund the police. But these cities are in a free fall. Well, obviously, the people who need the police the most uh, are the people who are in dangerous situations like many of these inner cities. And, uh, you know, when you stop and you think about what the police go through, uh, we need to just learn how to be a little more compassionate and think of put ourselves in other people's shoes. They get up every morning, put that uniform on. They don't know if they're coming back home. Every time that telephone rings, their spouse's heart jumps up into their throat. And uh, now, you know, you stop a car, you don't know what you're going to encounter. And the sad thing is, you know, there are a few bad police and a few incidents, but there are millions of encounters with police every, uh, every week. And you see only a very small number of these aberrant cases, but we take those and we magnify them and try to make it seem like that's what's going on with everybody. If every profession was treated that way, uh, nobody would look good. You know, doctors, dentists, lawyers, TV correspondents, everybody would look bad if we always judge them on the basis of the bad apple. It makes no sense whatsoever. And, and meanwhile, as we were talking about Minneapolis, just over the last you know, 12, 13 hours, it was reported that you know, a six-year-old, seven-year-old little girl uh, was shot and killed uh, in the city. Um, uh, again, very, very Absolutely. small police presence. It's just, uh, well, just... And what would you expect? What would you expect if the police are not able to do their job because there's so few of them, because so many of them are retiring. And, you know, I wonder, and I, I hope it's just a, an aberrant thought, but I wonder if they're trying to get rid of the police, make them all go away so that they can call on the military and we can have the same kind of situation that was in, in Washington, D.C. after January the 6th. I hope that we don't get to that point. But uh, this is the kind of thing that would set that up. And we need to understand that there are consequences for these kinds of actions. And we want to continue to have freedom. And the only way you can have freedom is that you have order, law and order, in the right uh, proportions. And that there's no question that there are things that can be done with the police and with policing. Uh, you know, there are all kinds of, of new technologies that are available that are non-lethal. We need to be talking about the various options that exist and how they can be utilized. But more importantly, com community policing. I talked to a police officer. He said he walks through the community every day. Everybody knows him. He never has to buy lunch. And everybody loves him. And if there's a problem, they tell him. You know, wow. those are the kinds of things that we can do. Dr. Carson, thank you so much for being here.